To be honest, there are times when I just think my photography is absolutely shit. Hello there, and welcome to another video. There's times when I'm doing photography that I pretty much hate everything that I create. And it's just this constant roller coaster of our relationship with our own work. We have this creative anxiety that is kind of a push and pull. It holds us back there and it pushes us forward. And it's just quite an exciting, if not frustrating process. So in today's video, I just wanted to share a story with you where I've gone on this roller coaster of creative emotions, basically, where I've hated my work, I've loved the work, I've hated it, I've loved it. And I'm sure you have gone through that as well at some point. That's just a natural process, natural th part of being a creative person. So let's head out and about, I'll roll the film and then we'll come back and I'll let you know how I'm feeling about it now. Now you join me on a fantastically beautiful, still, calm morning, but there are times when I'm doing landscape photography where I literally have no idea what I'm doing. None whatsoever. All the experience and skills that I've built up over the years just seem to completely go out the window. And that often happens on mornings like today when the conditions are just absolutely fantastic. And you know that somewhere in your vicinity there is an exceptional shot to be found. So I put that pressure on myself to then fail essentially because I'm not seeing what I need to see. And that's what's happening right now. I am currently composed on that tree in the distance there. I'm, I've got the 70 24 to 70 millimeter lens on there. I'm zoomed into 70 millimeters. I'm going for a square crop to fill the frame with that tree. The fog is beautiful. But when I've composed it, when I initially noticed this tree, the fog was not as thick. And since I've set the tripod up and got set up, the fog has thickened up. So actually I can't even see the trees in the background now. So it's just kind of a misty tree with a white background. And the tree is not an interesting enough shape to hold the image all by itself, I don't think. So when I initially composed it, there was the tree, a couple of other trees that you can see in the mist, and then the wood misty behind it, providing a little bit of a more interesting scene overall to give the tree some context. I've now lost that. <sighs> but there are some fantastic autumn colours still, which I'm quite surprised about. Right by my house, the autumn colours have gone, but here, these silver birch trees particularly, are still holding some lovely colour. So I think there's something to be done there. What I would like, really, is the sun to come up, start burning through some of this fog, and just creating that golden light within the fog. And then I think that I will have a couple of compositions, but uh, frustrating at the moment. So I'm pretty convinced this shot is not going to really be anything, but for the sake of it, I'm at f8, one quarter of a second, ISO 100, and then two second timer. I'm just going to go ahead and shoot. And the fog's too thick, but I'll show you the image anyway, and you can see what I've made of it. To be honest, the photography is not the main part of today. It's about getting through what is a difficult time. Now, always my way to cope has been to do landscape photography. And whilst this pandemic limits our travel, there are things almost all of us, especially in the UK, can still do to get out on foot and spend some time in a local landscape. And when you get conditions like I have today, it will transform your local landscape. Now, currently, <laughs> I'm struggling with that because I've got to know this place really well over the last year or two, and it's quite close to where I live. So 
I'd like to do it justice today, but I feel like I'm going to fail. But I guess that's not really the point today. The point of coming out today is not to capture a significantly good photograph. It's about enjoying being out on a very beautiful, still morning. Just taking that breath that we kind of all need, accepting what's happened and trying to press forward. So I think that's actually, I need to take my own advice and do that this morning. Accept the limitations that I feel my skill set has now and push forward. This is getting particularly frustrating now because it's so foggy and this place is quite big and to some extent I'm just wandering around aimlessly now and I've got a bit turned around if I'm honest. I'm not lost necessarily but compositions that I've kind of been developing over the last couple of years and been waiting for days like today are now eluding me because like I say, I'm a bit turned around and it just looks so different. This is the first time I've been here in fog like this and it just looks so different. Which I knew it would, but it's first thing in the morning so maybe my brain isn't firing on all cylinders. So now I've come to this stream, which I've never seen before. Ah, let's see if we can do something with the water. I mean, look behind me there. That's not too bad, but nothing I'm getting excited about. Nothing at all. <laughs> Ah, uh, I'm going to be annoyed with myself if I don't get something today. Right, so I think I've now found something and I'm pretty certain this is one of the compositions I'd picked out on a previous occasion. At least I'm going to give myself that credit, I think. As I've been exploring around and thinking about photographing trees and photographing woodland, this is actually a really interesting location because there is a lot of woodland, as you can kind of see behind me, but then there are also trees like that that are kind of on this flat plain and isolated. Now, I'm much more a fan personally of when I'm, at least when I'm making images, of the more simplistic type images. The busy woodland, it's not something I sort of gravitate towards. I do love woodland photography to look at. In terms of shooting it, it's not something that comes naturally to me. When I'm photographing trees, the way I go about it and the way I try to compose a good image is to think about relationships. Now, that could be the relationship between the mid-ground and background and the foreground, that kind of thing, or it could be, in this case, the relationship between the subjects. That's definitely how I like to... There's a lot of wildlife here as well, and I'm, they don't see me coming in this fog, so I'm disturbing them last minute. It's the relationship between the trees that appeals to me. That's kind of how I see trees generally, is they either stand alone as a lone tree, which we all know and love, or how they interact together. And when you get into a woodland, I find those relationships more difficult to find. And I think the best woodland photography isn't even looking for trees anyway. So it's the more simplistic image and that relationship between the trees. That's a story I want to tr tell and looking for relationships is a really good way to drive your story. So for my composition, it's this silver birch here, which still got those beautiful orangey yellow leaves on it. Then there's another one right next to it. And the one to the right is kind of leaning to the right as well. And I always find that just adds a little bit of interest as well, because it's not what you see all the time. Trees generally go straight up. This one's got a bit of a lean on it. It creates a more interesting shape. So the tree's relationship to the ground, I think, is then more interesting. But then as we move into the fog, we've then got that much bigger tree in the background. And that's kind of leaning over to the left. It just kind of creates an interesting relationship between those two trees. Uh, one leans left, one leans right. Sound familiar at the moment? Maybe? Who knows? But where I see it here, those two things, as I bring it down into my frame, are in absolute harmony. And that's the way it should be. We are looking for balance. We want balance in our photograph, in our frame. We want balance in our life. And we definitely want balance in our politics, 
and it's just getting a bit silly at the moment, isn't it? So <laughs> I'm always looking for balance in any aspect of my life, in this frame particularly as well. And I think I have found that. So let's get to shooting it. I'm going for a square crop again because that tree over to the left there, I don't want that in my frame at all. And it would be interesting having a little, a little bit wider, but I just think crafting that square crop frame is really nice. The wind's starting to get up a little bit. So I might just raise my ISO a touch. So I'm at ISO 200, F8, because there is a bit of depth, but I don't mind if that rear, tr the tree behind fades into the defocused area a little bit. One twenty-fifth of a second, two second timer. I've manually focused on that front tree. There we go. Let's have a very, very quick look at that. And then I will show you. Yeah, that's, I like the story there. I like the colours, the autumnal colours of the grasses as well as nice. Framed by the fog. Yeah, happy with that. Okay, so I've set up for another shot and because the fog is now quite a bit thicker, I've come into the woodland to a tree that I have found before and I like it, as you can see, because of the fantastic shape. And then it's kind of framed and it's in a small clearing. It's framed by these, these other trees around it there and I think it just makes for a really interesting scene. There's then a bit of distance behind it to those much bigger trees behind. Now normally, every other single time I've been here, that tree is completely lost in that background. But because of this beautiful fog today, this image is now working. I have composed on that tree, I've focused on that tree. And when I've actually framed it with the camera, so a natural framing I might get, the tree just over to the left hand side, that very vertical one, essentially spoils the image and spoils the foreground. Now I've got the framing right on the tree for what I would want, but I think the image works just as well if I then zoom out. I then get more of this autumnal foreground. That tree, that vertical one that's distracting me becomes much less prominent and starts to act as a much better frame. Looking through, I've then got the tree on the right, starting to frame it as well, get a little bit more of that in, but still keeping the main trunk out, just some of those branches that are kind of working their way into the frame, but not overlapping with the branches of my main subject tree. So I think it's just a really nice composition. I've then got that fog, providing that, dis that, that separation from the background. Interesting shape, nice framing, lovely fog. Two second timer, I'm focused manually on that tree again. Yeah, that's that's just lovely. That's a lovely sort of classic woodland photograph, I think. But this is the Alpkit brew kit. I've had my other burner for quite a while and then my brother-in-law had this one and I was very jealous. So I've gone and picked it up from Alpkit online, not sponsored or anything, I just think it's a really good product. It's quite a lot cheaper than similar items online as well, so it's a really good deal. And put the lid on, heats water up really quickly and then a nice freshly brewed cup of coffee. People always ask why I do this and not just bring a flask. It's because it's just much more fun and much more satisfying than bringing a flask. So there we go. And then I get to enjoy freshly brewed coffee. Perfect while I wait for the light. I really don't think there's much of a better way to wait for the light than this. We are in a ridiculous situation at the moment, aren't we? Where we are faced with this pandemic that seemingly no one has the answer to or what the right thing knows what the right thing to do is to solve it so we are faced with another lockdown but 
the rules aren't quite as stringent this time. We can spend unlimited time outside doing exercise, doing leisure activities, which therefore obviously includes landscape photography. Um, you're not really supposed to travel that far unless it's for work, which in my case it is, but I make these videos for you. So I'm going to be staying as local as I possibly can over the course of November. Right, I'm hoping now the light is gonna come soon because I can't spend all day here as much as I would like to. So it's time for the sun to burn through. <laughs> Right, I'm set up for another shot and it's about quarter past 11 now and this fog has persisted for ages and it's actually really, really quite bright now. This tree here, his beautiful silver birch here, is my focus for this image and what I was hoping for was that this fog was going to lift just as the sun started coming through because I really needed some direct sunlight for this on that silver birch tree with a bit of the fog as well. Very specific conditions that I was hoping for, so uh, I can't be too annoyed that that hasn't happened. So one of the sort of signatures of this place is the silver birch and these beautiful pine trees. I like that relationship uh, and that's what I'm trying to tell. That's the story I'm trying to tell in this picture. Not the big one there, although I do like that. I've tried something with that in the frame as well, but I specifically like those ones a bit further towards the back with a bit of mist between the tree, the silver birch and them. But the composition isn't gonna work quite as well without the sun because the sky is a lot of, is very white, obviously. There's quite a big bit of sky in there. So I was hoping for the light to be coming through and create like a overexposed highlighted flare area of the image and then get the fog and the tree and everything. But I don't have that, so not too much of a problem. But I'm at F11, I'm at 125th of a second, ISO 100. I'm just gonna take this shot. It's an eight by 10, this one. So I've cropped down a little bit to get the composition right. Let's have a look in fact. I like it still, it's just a lot of sky in it, maybe a little bit too much. If I'd had that highlighted sun coming through it would have worked, but still not too bad, but there we go. Okay, so as you may have noticed there, the a couple of the images that I ended up showing you were not the exact compositions that I talked about because I felt pretty good after I'd left the scene about what I'd captured. But then when I first post-processed those images, I hated them. I absolutely hated them. I just couldn't get the color right. I didn't love the composition anymore. I'd done a few things at scene, so I managed to pull something together, but yeah, I felt terrible. I then went to bed, woke up this morning, re-edited them a little bit, and there's a couple of them that I actually now really like, particularly that black and white one at the start and that last one as well. It was actually the two in the middle that I thought were going to be better, but it turned out and I still don't particularly like those images. Part of it, I think, is my relationship with woodland photography. I just don't love it. I love looking at it when other people create it, but I just don't love creating it myself. And I think it takes quite a lot of post-processing, which I just don't love doing. Or it might be that I'm just shit woodland photography. Who knows? <laughs> there are times when I just feel like I'm not a great photographer. But as a professional, I thought it might be worth sharing that with you because I'm sure you feel like that as well sometimes. And your success is not always linked to how you are feeling creatively. And then social media can cause problems. Bad critique can cause problems. And yeah, that, that's it. Anyway, if you want to learn photography from me, check out the Raw Room. There's some great stuff coming up on there. Uh, I think it's gonna be really exciting. Get your seven day free trial in now. It will keep you entertained, motivated, and moving forward through this second lockdown. And I hope you're all okay and doing well. And I'll see you on another video very, very soon. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography, out.